Has the judge struck the right balance, Chris? Um, no. Um, I think that a, um, a, a statutory body uh, to enforce standards in the print journalism industry uh, is impossible uh, because the sanctions that it could apply um, just can't, can't te technically be implemented. The, con the model is very much Ofcom, uh, which regulates uh, television, commercial television, and the BBC's own uh, guidelines, which are very, very tough. Uh, you don't tend to get uh, uh, contempt of court issues like Chris Jeffries from the BBC or ITV or the broadcast media because of these very, very tough regulators. But those guidelines are enforced in the case of ITV by the threat of taking away their licence. Um, and in the case of the BBC, of not renewing the charter and removing the right to levy um, the uh, licence fee. Now, there's no equivalent uh, with newspapers, so it's hard to see how uh, a body, um, a body to, to, as it were, run standards in the print industry uh, would have any teeth at all in practice. Uh, and, and that goes to the politics of it with, uh, with David Cameron uh, saying that he thinks... Uh, you know, he's been asked to do something which is uh, impossible in practice. So you're saying there are, there are kind of mechanical difficulties with it, but if I say to you, if you owned a newspaper and I threaten you with a well, million-pound fine, isn't that a mechanism? Well, it's, it's as simple as this. If, if, um, if the BBC had done anything like uh, the Millie Dowler case or was found to be bugging phones... Um, first of all, the programme would be off the air and the BBC itself could well be closed down. That would be an option. They would lose the right to levy the licence fee and, um, uh, and the charter, which, ha which, you know, which is granted by the government. It's the same with uh, the commercial television as well. Um, if you're in breach of the Ofcom code, there was a case a couple of years ago where ITV was fined £3 million uh, for faking an interview in a documentary um, uh, called The Connection, which was about the drugs industry. Now, that kind of thing, the faking of interviews and the using of illicit methods, we now know was a daily occurrence, or sorry, a weekly occurrence on the news of the world. Um, and there was no nothing that could be done about it other than using the existing laws. Now, the news of the world has gone because the owners of the news of the world uh, decided to close it down because it became a toxic brand and was no longer profitable. They couldn't sell advertising in it because it was so associated with the Millie down the situation. So, you know, the law has to be enforceable uh, and not just based on a knee-jerk feeling that, that was very widespread in the country that uh, something has to be done about these rotten journalists in the wake of the um, Millie Dowler affair, which, which really disgusted people. But just, just to be clear on this, Chris, I mean, if, if you and I could sit round over a cup of coffee and devise a system for punishing newspaper editors that would actually scare them, as it were, would you then defend it? Is it the mechanics you're worried about, or is it the principle of state regulation of the press? <laughs> Two things there. Um, you can't make water run uphill. We have a privately owned press, which is a commercial business. Now... Particularly when you're talking about the tabloids, you're talking about sales of two, three, four million. A 10% increase in sales there um, can bring them in a quarter of a million pounds on that very day. And they'll, they'll hang on to that extra revenue, um, you know, for weeks and weeks. So in the case of Chris Jeffries, the bare bones of this was a totally innocent man. Um, I'll be careful what I say, he looks a bit eccentric, he's, I'm sure he's a very, very nice man, he looks a bit strange, was wrongly accused of a horrific crime um, and, and gave the tabloids an exclusive um, of we know who the criminal was in this case and they sold the paper like hot cakes. They would have made millions out of that. Now, how in a commercially owned press are you going to stop a maverick owner like Mr Murdoch or Mr Richard, uh, or Mr Desmond, who runs the... Um, the Daily Express and has always refused any type of regulation. The, the, the gains of, of, of uh, being a maverick in this business are so great in the commercially run business that I don't see how anything is going to prevent them doing that from time to time. Okay.